Defcon Dark Knight Badge Part 4. We're going to be laying out some hardware tonight. A couple things new. Um, first off, you'll notice that I have this spiffy lower third down here. That's a new graphic that I added on OBS. Uh, don't know why. Just make me feel a little less unprofessional. Secondly, if you listen, you can hear... What is that? Is that dual core I hear? Dual core and beefy? That's right. This is, uh, it's actually beefy with dual core. Um, and apparently I'm listening to my own YouTube stream. I'm going to stop that. Um, but I've got, uh, 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 it's called Press Start from Beefy's album With Sprinkles. And uh, dual core is, is uh, singing with him. Great song. I figured it'd be a good one to listen to. I'm actually going to hopefully be listening to this, listening to music. It's on a shuffle. I've got my whole nerdcore list on shuffle uh, while I'm working tonight. We'll see if I can listen and actually uh, talk at the same time. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. So there might be some more silence. But if there is, then you get to listen to the music. Uh, but what are we going to do tonight? So we've got all the board laid out. Um, I've also got some hotkeys down here for uh, scene switching on OBS, which will be kind of neat. So, um, yo, why isn't that working? There we go. Um, so we've got all this stuff laid out in, um, in KiCad in the schematic program. You know what? I am not going to be able to listen to this <laughs> and talk at the same time. Sorry guys, beefy dual core. I love you. And I love listening to you while I'm working, but I cannot, I can't listen to that and talk at the same time. That's the part I'm having a hard time with. Anyway, so, um, We've got stuff on the board laid out, uh, or in the schematic, excuse me. It is time to start doing uh, some hardware layout. So the first step, whenever you've got a schematic drawn up in KiCad, you'll notice that I could go through the schematic without having to worry about physical layout of components, or even what shape the components are in. I just put down a capacitor. I didn't say whether that is a leaded capacitor, whether that's a chip capacitor, surface mount, whether it's a you know 603, an 805, a 1206, um, uh, you know how far apart the holes are going to be if they're through hole. I didn't specify any of the physical layout. Like, what kind of switch is this? Well, it's a push button. Great. There are a bajillion, you know, single pole, dual throw, or single pole, single throw buttons out there. Which format is this? I don't know. Um, these LEDs are exactly the same as these LEDs, except for the fact that they're not going to be once I uh, uh, once I lay things out, right? You know, this L uh, OLED display is just a four-pin header. I have the, the display is actually much more complex than just a four-pin header. But here, all I need to, to worry about are the, two, the four pins, right? So I... The schematic, I can worry about what connects to what without having to worry about the actual physical connections. So the next thing we have to do is we go into, yes, CV PCB, which is going to, oh, nope, I have to annotate the schematic first. So annotation, what that is, is um, it just does it automatically. It just picks them sequentially. All Like R question mark, R question mark, U question mark, all that. What it does is it takes all of those and assigns numbers to them. It just kind of starts in the upper, let's see here, there we go, upper left-hand corner and goes down to the lower right-hand corner um, and just numbers everything sequentially. All right, so CVPCB is the app we're in here, and this tool is the mapping between you have a component on the circuit board or excuse me, you have a component, a component in your schematic and you need to turn it into something physical on the circuit board. This is where you do it. Um, so there are a lot of things on here that I've never done, like a CR2032. I There's no battery on here. That is interesting. I might have to draw one or find some find something power. Nope. I don't know. I'll have to figure out how, where I can find a CR2032 outline. Interesting. I never even thought of that. Okay. Um, but these puffs and point ones, pretty much all of those, possibly not that one, are going to be, let's see here, we're going to choose capacitor through holes. And I want to bring up, nope, that's the wrong screen. Users can't see it over there. I'm going to bring that up. Um, just dawned on me, I don't have the chat room open. 
how do I do this? Uh, no. I can't remember how I've done this. I gotta do this in such a way that I'm not actually gonna be listening to my own audio. Um, like that. That's what I don't want to do. Stomp on, stomp on me, I don't have the chat room open. Yes, I know, I we've already established this. this. Uh, uh, forgive me, I know this is terribly exciting. My channel. Um, How was I doing this in the past where I could get to the chat room? Live streaming. There we are. There's my chat room. And this way I'm not going to actually be uh, listening to myself, so that's good. Uh, it doesn't matter. Nobody's watching right now anyway. That's exciting. All right, well, if anyone joins me, then uh, uh, I'll do it. Let me actually head over to my Darknet account and retweet my tweet. I know I should probably do all of this stuff before I start streaming. The exciting life of a YouTube star, and I use the ter term star very, very, very loosely. Uh, do -do -do -do, retweet, okay. Oh, where to my personal account? I think I've got like 60 followers. Kind of crazy talk if you ask me. But, hey, hi followers. Um, thank you for following. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy what I'm doing here. Obviously you do, because otherwise you wouldn't be watching. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay. So I'm going to keep working here. All right, so this is our footprint viewer. When I bring up a... Um, Actually, hold on. Let me do it like that, and then like that, so that we can see them both at the same time. Except that this one doesn't need to be this big, so I'm going to make it smaller, and that one can be bigger so that I can see things. Okay, so all of those, except for the 4.7 and the 10, all of those capacitors, we are going to use... I think that's the... Yeah, let's go for the 2.5. So what these these dimensions here are um D3 is the um the disk size. I think that's like 3 millimeters wide and the 2.5 is the 2.5 millimeters between pins. Basically it's the same thing as 0.1 inch spacing. Um it's actually 2.54, close enough. Hmm. Uh 5 millimeters here this pin spacing is uh 200 mil or 200 uh 200 thousandths. 0.2 inch spacing there as well. And the six means it's a slightly bigger, uh, wider cap. Um, oh, you know what? No, I lied. So that D6 is the distance from here to here, the outside edges of the cap. So the pin, the, t the five is the spacing between the pins, and then the six is how much uh, in the same um, same direction as the pins. Because like here's a P5, but a D seven and a half, so and they just kind of stuck out a little bit farther on things. These are all these point ones and the puffs and everything are going to be little tiny caps. So we're going to use the two point fives for that, and we will assign those to ah, knock it off. All of those capacitors. Now the point four set four point seven and the ten microfarad. I think we're going to have to do something a little bit bigger. We might have to pull tantalums, although if they're tantalums, they're going to be in that same size. Um, okay. Uh, or we could do... Yeah, let's go ahead and set it up for a radial, because the radials are the... Um, sorry, I just kicked something over. Uh, the radial types are the cans, um, the big electrolytics that you think of. 10 microfarad and 4.7 microfarads are pretty small for electrolytics, but we can do that. And we can also fit a disk inside an electrolytic, so it's not the end of the world if I get this wrong. Um, these are interesting because they include length, 
which is funny because this is a two-dimensional board and the length is the length of the capacitor sticking up off the board. I think the reason that we have different here uh, is because if you can you can go into KiCad and do a 3D model of your board and I think it'll show the different lengths on there, but I don't care. I'm not actually going to be doing that. <clears throat> uh, okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, status and IR transmit. Let's do those LEDs first. These are going to be the standard 5 millimeter LEDs. Uh, not 3 pins. I don't want the 8s. And I don't want the 3s. I want the 5s. Okay. So we're going to do those. These 16 LEDs are a little different. These are... Um, hang on. So if you look at the back of this board, um, all of these white components here are these LEDs. Now, they are surface mount LEDs, but they are specifically designed so that they shine. Uh, so you mount the LED on this side, but it shines through the board. It is firing that direction. The, normally, a surface mount LED, when you mount it on this side of the board, it will shine away from the board. These are specifically designed to shine through the board into the board this way. Um, Hey, Joel. Uh, finally got a watcher. Yay, thank you. Uh, so these are designed to shine through the board that direction. Uh, and then uh, we have them backlighting some holes in the copper and uh, solder mask on the board there that are used for... Um, I really can't get that camera to focus that close. Um, but it shows like the number, the digit number, and the letters on each of the things. And the idea is that we can in, uh, light them up individually. The problem is that I don't think those are straight up 1206s, uh, 1206 um, surface mounts. So I will have to go look those up, and I might have to draw an outline. So for right now, I'm going to leave them unassigned. Actually, right now, I think I'm just going to assign them to 1206s, and then I'll go in and replace those later um, as we need. There we go. So those are all 1206s for now. Boot 1 and Boot 2. These are the pin headers. So pin headers, they're not the angled ones. They are the straight. So angled ones are meant for side fire. Oh, hey, how about I uh, give that back to you? Okay, sorry about that. So the angled, where you see a component here that says angled, the, that's meant that they're they're right angle, right? They if, if the board is here, the pin comes up and turns at a right angle, and it's meant for connecting sideways. That is not what I want here. I'm going to be turning this into a header, so uh, or like a, a jumper. So we want straight and a one by three. Each of these is one by three. We're going to put two of them right next to each other, so they'll be two by three. That is, um, oops, not with the lower third. That is that little 2x3 jumper block right there that is used for setting the boot mode, telling the microcontroller how to boot, whether you want it to boot into... Um, uh... <laughs> Joel says, I think you're going to be podcast while I'm doing your C-sharp homework. Oh my goodness, C-sharp, huh? Uh, enjoy that. Uh, anyway, so the the pin header straight, uh, the, the, the three, we're going to be doing uh, two... Uh, two of the one by three headers right next to each other to make a two by three. So we'll do that. Uh, power, five volts in. <sighs> um, connector, what connector do I want for that? I think, oh, dang it, I keep doing that. Um, barrel, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> So those are like the 2.1 millimeter barrel plugs, a uh, pretty common power connector. We'll go ahead and throw that on there for the 5 volt. P1, is that what I think it is? Hang on. Um, oh, dang it. I did not want... That's not what I meant. Go away. Um, that's what I meant. Yeah. So P1... Is that that? That is that. Okay. No, that is not 5 volts. That is plus 3.3 volts. Let's not screw that up. Uh, 
you know what? I don't want that populated. Um, so instead of putting a barrel jack on that, I'm just going to make that a two pin header. So let's go back down to the pin headers. So, oh, I haven't talked about um, CVPCB at all. So on the left-hand column here are the different categories of components. In the middle column are all of your, your components on this board. So all your capacitors, your diodes, jumpers, uh, P is, I don't know what P stands for, resistors, and so on and so forth, right? So these are all the components that I that I put in the schematic. Over here are your different libraries. These are the different categories of components. And here are the individual components. Why the columns are this direction, I don't know. I would expect it to be libraries on one side, then all of the individual components, and then my components on the outside. But I don't know why they put my stuff in the middle. Um, so when you select one of these, it makes different ones available over here, and then you select them for your different things here. So for example, P1 is the, it's just a two pin header on the 3.3 volt line. Oh, um, I made that change, but I didn't save it and apply it. So that is now called 3.3. We're going to save that. And, um, you know, I'm not actually sure how to make that apply. Let's save edits and close. And then we're going to save that. And we're going to open that up again. And it's renamed. Okay. But I don't want it to be a barrel jack. I want it to be pin headers. Um, and we'll do, again, not angled, straight. Just straight up two pin header like that. Okay. ST link. This is going to be a four pin header. Um, USB. I think that's up here in connectors. USB B. Do we want micro USB? I don't know. Micro USB are kind of a pain in the ass. I'm just going to do straight up through hole USB connector. We'll do that. Okay. OLED display. Um, so that is not that board. That is this. This OLED display. When I get to the final board, I'm going to want to put a full outline for the whole display. But right now, it's literally just those four pins. And so I could go in here and just choose a four pin, um, uh, four pin, uh, just four pin header you know, point one spacing header, and uh, that would work for the OLED display. And then I just need to make sure to draw a box around it. Um, dang it, still getting used to those quick keys. Do I have, I might have made one. Libraries, that's mine. Button ceramic choke toroid. Nope. Um, You can get an idea of the kinds of things that I've been doing based on the uh, parts that I've made. <laughs> a balanced mixer choke. A single pole dual throw relay. A 3 by AAA battery holder. An ADE1 mixer. Gee, what kinds of things do I play with? Um, it does not look like I have a component made out for the display yet. So I'm going to go lazy and just go straight up to a pin header and make it a one by four. All right. Resistors. All of these are going to be resistors through hole. Yeah. Need a little more space. Horizontal 10 millimeter, I think. Give us plenty of space. So the seven millimeter, oh, oh, nope. Seven millimeter is um, a little small for a standard quarter watt resistor. It works great if you've got the little eighth watt resistors, but they're not very common. Uh, for the quarter watts, 10 millimeter spacing is, is a lot better. 10 millimeter is going to be uh, 400 or 0.4 inches. 
uh, which is much better for little quarter watt resistors. And, and oh, I do not want to select all of those, just those. Okay, we'll do that. And then push buttons, including reset, but not that. Um, okay, I do have a library for these buttons. That's the one. Okay, so those are those kinds of buttons. Um, I've got, I have a few of them, a whole bag. I think this is supposed to be 200 or 400 or 500, several hundred of these little single pull, single throw buttons, kind of like what are on the, uh, almost exactly like what's on the uh, badge there. SDM 32 F 103, blah, blah. Um, nope. Nope. Okay. So that is going to be a surface mount package. What was it? Um, LQFP 48. Yeah, I want the LQFP48. So, LQFP, QFP, PQFP. Oh, dagnabbit, I might have to make one. Okay, here's a neat trick. You can sort by library as well as number of pins as well as by keyword. Um, so I don't want to sort on keyword, but I'm going to sort based on number of pins. So there are 48 pin dips, LQFP. There we are. Is that what we said, LQFP? Knock it off. There we go. LQFP 48. LQFP 48. Yes, that's what I wanted. Okay, so LQFP48. Housings QFP, that makes sense. I was looking for it in the SM, uh, the surface mount section, SMD packages. But housings QFP, that makes sense. Um, I don't know why those are any different. They look exactly the same. LQFP, TQFP. Okay, low and tall? I don't know. Anyway, we'll go with the LQ because that's what it says on the package. Again, I suspect this is one of those things that will only matter on the 3D rendering. 38 kilohertz IR receiver. Now, I did make one of those. Nope, nope. Go back and sort place in the library. And that is... No, that one. Yeah. Um... This is a 3.3 volt regulator. I need to make sure that I got, I think this one is, um, that thing, you know, with the three pins, what is it? S-O-T, S-O-T, T-S-O-T, that's the one. Okay, um, S-O-T-23. I think that's the one. Okay. RFM 69 HCW. I am going to have to do a layout for this one because this is a very custom packet. That one, however, I can do... I've got a ceramic resonator. Nope, not the surface mount. That one. All right. So, one, three, two. So, this is... Okay, remember... In a previous episode, previously on Smitty working on something, I was talking about how the crystal is pins one and two, but three, the pin in the middle three is the one that goes to ground. And I was kind of weirded out by that, um, that I expected this to go one, two, three, if the pins were uh, labeled sequentially. Um, but it would go, went one, two, and then three off here to the side. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're seeing here. Uh, one and two are the crystal, and then three is the ground reference for each of the capacitors. So these do match up. This is correct. This is what we want it to be. Um, bring that one to the forward. So for the eight, we're going to do ceramic resonator and go. 
Now, the 32768 is a different package. That is a crystal. Nope, not that one. I have no idea what it's called, so I'm just going to have to cycle through here until I find it. That's the one. But that's surface mount. That's it. Those are them. Horizontal, two millimeter, three millimeter with big pads. I think I'm going to go with three pad, the big pads. Let's see what else is in here. Crystal watch. I think that actually might be. Intent. Oh, really? That's new. I had to create one of those in my own library. Um, okay. I think I do want it laying down, so I will give it a gr an exposed ground pad underneath it that you can use to solder the housing of the crystal to. Keeps things a little uh, more stable. All right. So the only thing I haven't assigned a part to are the battery and the RFM 69 HTW. Um, oh, what the heck? Where do I, oh, dang it. What did I do now? Okay. Um, there are a lot of things that only have two pins. Where's the search? Oh, no, no. I could swear there was a button here for selecting from um, like doing a text search. Is it F? Control F? No. All right, well, batteries. Any of you guys see where battery would be? I might have to just uh, make my own. Sockets, maybe? Hey, look at that. Those are not the sockets that we have. Wait, shit, where the hell was that? That was... I just had it. There we are, connectors. Those are not the connector I want for that, uh, for that part. Discreet. What are these? Capacitors? Interesting. Super cap. Those fuse holders. 
not an inductor, not an LED. Slick. Uh, pin header. Relays through hole resistors. Excellent. I know this is terribly exciting, isn't it? Um, well, I got nothing. All right, so I'm going to have to lay out a part for this. But that's okay. We've gotten almost everything done, and I already knew I was going to have to do the RFM69 HCW. So let's go ahead and save this, and we will close it so that we're not making things difficult. Um, oh, no, I guess we need to open that up so that we can get to... Component editor. Footprint libraries. What? That's where you select the libraries. That's not what I want. Okay. Schema, schematic library editor, printed circuit board, PCB footprint editor. That's what I want. Okay. That's what I need. <clears throat> So, first thing we're going to have to do is pull up um, RFM 69 HCW. Let's see if this has a physical layout of the chip. So that's our, the wireless module. It's a little circuit board that's got a bunch of components on it. Um, these edges here are called castles or uh, crenellations. They are a hole, but then the pad kind of continues on to the edge of the board where it's a little bit scalloped out. So what the, what you do when you design those is you put two through holes right next to each other, and then you draw the edge of the board right through the outer one. And when they, um, so they, you know, you lay out the board and it's got copper along the whole spot. And there are two holes there. And then the router comes along and just cuts right through one of the holes and you end up left with what's called a castle or a crenellation depending on who you're talking to. Um, they're really easy to solder by hand. Uh, you can also put pins in them and use them as a, well, like header pins. Uh, that's convenient. I'm going to need that when I sign out some pins. But I also need some physical dimensions. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're reading all of this? No, okay. Physical layouts are usually either at the very beginning or at the very end of a. There we go, very beginning or very end of a uh, of a data sheet. This one they happen to be at the end, because that is the second to last page. And it does not give a suggested board layout. It only gives the dimensions of the package itself. Okay. Well, we can do that. Uh, so they are two millimeters spaced. Usually when diagrams like this don't specify units, it's probably, um, probably metric. So it's 16 millimeters by 16 millimeters, uh, two millimeters between each pin, uh, and you're one millimeter in from the edge. So one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 16. Yep. That makes sense. And then 13.6 in, <laughs> that's the other cue that this is uh, metric. They use a comma as a decimal separator instead of a decimal point. Um, I think that's a very Asian thing, I think. I can't remember exactly what part of the world it is that does that, but not any world, not any country that uses um, imperial units, which basically means the United States. 
So I got to go put that into a component outline. So I see we've got a few new people uh, in the chat room right now. Uh, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. I am looking at the chat room every once in a while. Um, oops. So, um, you know, pop in, say hi. Let me know if you have any questions um, or just, you know, death threats, accusations, whatever. I'm here. All right. So let's open up a library. Rather than try and put this in their libraries, I tend to just put everything in my own library. So I've got my library there. And I am going to open Footprint Viewer. Nope, I'm going to create a new footprint. This is going to be RFM69HCW. Yeah, move that there, move that up there. Okay, first off, I am going to switch to millimeters. The grid is 0.25 millimeters. Yeah, we'll start there. 13.6, 16 minus 13.6 is going to be 2.4. Really? And then one half of that is uh, 1.2. 1.2, 1.2. I'm trying to figure out what the distance between this edge and the center of that hole is going to be. If it's 13.6 from center to center, and it is centered in 16 millimeters, then that's going to be, what, 2.4, 1.2 in. Yeah, so 0.25 is going to be a pain. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a 0.2 instead. All right. So. Wait a minute. I'm not trying to recreate this. I'm trying to create pads that will go underneath it. So I don't care about that. I'm going to create a pad. I'm going to just put it there. I'm going to edit it. Pad number one. It is not through hole. It is surface mount. It is not circular. It is rectangular. Um, size. Huh. It doesn't actually give a pad size, does it? It's good to see you too, Tater. R0.4, so that's the whole size, is not giving a size of the pads. That's kind of annoying. Well, have calipers will measure. Where are my calipers? Right here. Uh, go to millimeters. Oh, this is very small. Getting old. So I am measuring the pad on this thing at about 1.4 millimeters wide. And that looks about right because if it's two millimeters from center to center and 1.4 for each one, then about 0.6 between each one. That seems that seems reasonable. So 1.4 size, let's see here, I'm going to make it this way, so I want the Y size to be 1.4 millimeters, and then I want the X size to be deep enough to include the, turn this off, um, sorry, I want it to be deep enough to go all the way back over here. Um, but I still want it to extend far enough over here that you can get some good soldering iron contact on it. So if that is 1.2 to there, and that's a 0.4 hole, so 1.2, 3, 4, 5. 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.
we'll call it 1.6 deep and then maybe just two millimeters, 2.2 millimeters. So I want it to be, I want it to extend 1.6 millimeters in from the edge of the board. And if I make it 2.2 .2 millimeters, 1.6, it's going to be 0.8 millimeters sticking out. 0.4 millimeters, 0.6 millimeters sticking out. 1.6 plus 0.6 is 2.2, .2, yes. Okay. Um... Then I have to figure out where the set where the center is going to be. If it's one point six, I want to I want to know where the edge line is. No, I, um, two point two. Yeah, see, two point two is not going to be centered on a grid point. So if I do two point four, then it'll be point eight on one side and one point six on the other side. The center point is going to be 0.4 in from the edge. All right, I think I'm good with that. Do you follow all that? Um, minus, what's the center point? It's going to be 0.4 in from minus 8, so 7.6. Um, and then I'll deal with Y position separately. So 7.6, because that's going to be 0.4 in, the, because it's measuring the center point. Um, okay. I think that's what I want. Okay. So that's one. Uh, can I copy? Duplicate pad? Control D. There we go. Um, where was that? Point th three point six. So I want. Actually, no. I just want this on point one. Seven point eight. No, seven point six is the center. Oh, but I didn't grab it at there. Okay. So I want that to be at center right there. Okay. Now, control D. Duplicate pad. Okay. So I'm at 7.8 and 2.8. So, okay. So it offsets by 0.2 every time. That's kind of weird. Um... Make sure I'm centered and see if that changes it. Nope. Okay, that's perfect. 7.6. So I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I need 4 on either side. Okay. Okay, now, can I duplicate that whole row? Copy block? I can. Except that I gotta do move them one at a time, which is kind of a bummer. Seven point six. I am in the center of the pad. There we go. So what I did is I copied one of the things that KiCad is a little weird about is that when you copy um, things, there's probably a better way to do this. But when you copy, it just kind of paste them right on top of the other things that you copied, and so that's why when I say move. 
and it tells me there are two things underneath your cursor. Which one are you trying to grab? And since they're copies of each other, they're exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which one I grab, but I do have to grab one of each. And these all look like they just disappeared, but that's just a rendering issue. You hit F3 and it re-renders and everything's good. Okay, so that's front silk. Let's go up to eight millimeters. So down here are an XY coordinate of uh, where your cursor is. So I'm trying to go find eight millimeters by eight millimeters. And I'm just gonna draw a 16 by 16 box around the thing. All right, there's my box. Now, we need to specify pin one. Um, I doubt you're gonna be able to see it. The way we did it on this board, there is a weird kind of piece of art, oh my goodness, it focused. A little piece of artwork up there that kind of looks like a seven. I think that's the Hope RF logo or something similar to it. That is what we used this year. Um, as uh, our indicator. So I think I'm gonna try and draw something similar. It's kind of like that. I don't know where that came from, but that's artwork that's on the board. Uh, it's not, oh, it's right here. Okay, so I need to make sure I get the pinouts right. Okay, you know what? That piece is in the other corner. Did I see that right? Yeah, see it's down here. The big chip is up in that corner, it's down here in this lower corner, uh, down by the antenna. So according to that, that's the big chip up there, and it's opposite of that. So I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do it, this pinout, I'm gonna need to draw that little seven thing down here. Okay. All right. Um, what did I number the pins here? Because I had to create. Yeah, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so I numbered them like a normal chip. Okay. So edit 2, edit 3, edit 4, edit 5, edit 6, edit 7, edit 8, edit 9, Edit 10, edit 11, edit 12, 13, edit 14, edit 15, and last and least, actually last and greatest, 16. All right. So that's my board. The question is whether these pads extend out far enough. I'm not convinced they do. That's not nearly as much as I expected. Point eight, it's not even a full millimeter. You know what? Yeah. Uh, let's make these. Okay. If we make them 28 wide, that'll make them stick out by another 4, but that does mean I need to make that an 8. Yes, okay. So that becomes an 8, that becomes an 8. Okay. 
One thing that Eagle does much better than KiCad is that it does have a bulk edit feature where you can say, make this change. And then you click on all the things that you want to make that change to. And assuming that thing can take that particular change, it does it. Whereas here, unless someone knows something about KiCad that I don't, I basically have to go and bulk edit that change by hand, which is kind of a bummer. But better than doing all of this by hand, like with pen and paper. Oh, oh. Cancel. Cancel. Uh, come on. Oh, do, 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 do. Edit. Eat. Eat. Okay, I'm happier with that. Debating whether I want to put some pin names or text next to it. Eh, I don't think I will. All right, so I'm calling that good for an RFM 69 HCW component. We're going to save that. Yes. All right, cool. Now... CR2032 battery clip. CR2032. Uh, we'll just do that. Nope. Clip. Totally lied. Battery holder. That's the one I want. Data sheet. So this is literally just a little, oh, nope, that's the surface mount version. I don't want surface mount. I want through hole. Um, this is literally just a little clip of metal that um, has little through holes here. And uh, and then it's got little springy bits. And the, the top part here is positive, And the ground is just an exposed pad on the bottom that the battery slides into. And that's what I want to see right there. Excuse me. So we are going to, so some, a lot of data sheets will have a recommended footprint. And when you go into your part editor here, like this one, uh, say footprint, yep, yeah, I know, it's already done. Then we need to create a new one. Um, create new library. Nope, I don't want to create a new library. I just want to do new footprint. There we go. CR2032. Um, anyway, whenever you go into your component editor like this to create a component, all you need to do is find in the data sheet where it has a recommended footprint and recreate that. So, is this metric again? Yep, this is all metric, I think. All dimensions are in inches or millimeters in square brackets. All right, let's go back to inches then. <clears throat> uh, what's my grid? 10 mils? Usually I do a grid of 25, but I've, I see like a 0.41... Um, and a 0 0.09, well, no, those are drill sizes, never mind. <clears throat> um, no, 0 0.09 is the thing, but I'm still going to be typing that in. Yeah, 0 0.41, so I am going to need a, a 10 mil grid. Okay. Uh, so 0 0.41 out from the center. 
Shoop. Again, I'm looking down at the bottom. Oh, it's crikey. Um, 0 0.41, okay. So there's my 0 0.41 point. So again, I'm looking down here at these um, X and Y coordinates. So 0 0.41 at 0, but it's not 0 because it's up by 0.06. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 0 0.41 at 0 0.06, just like that. Okay. Yoink. Ah, ha, ha. Just kidding. Uh, pad number 1. And this one is going to be through hole, and this one will be... Mm. Yeah, we'll do circular. Um, it is a circular hole. Size X. The hole itself is going to be point point oh four inches. Okay. And the size of this is going to be point zero nine inches. Okay. Um, yeah, all copper layers, that's true. Pad to die length. Okay. What if I make that an oval? Uh, 0.09 in that direction. No. I make that a 0.15. So I make it an a long oval in that direction. Um, there is an offset orientation. Nope, orientation is correct. Shape offset x zero. A shape offset y. What is it from nine to about 0.3? O3? Okay. So if I do that, and then I put two of them on top of each other, that'll just be kind of this oval with two holes in it. I think that's kind of what I want. We'll see what that looks like. Um... All right, and we're going to duplicate that pad, but we're going to put it down here at minus 0 0.06 for one, and I'm going to edit that pad, and I'm going to make that a minus three, just like that. And yoink. Why does that overlap there? Okay, so let's make these shorter. Um, 12. And, uh, nope, boop, 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 just kidding. Uh, it was a 15, which gave me the difference being 0 0.6, half of which is 0 0.3. So if I want to make the 2, so 4, so 13, and make that a 2. There we go. And then do the same thing here. 13 and make that a 2. Okay. Oh, fooey. All right, forget it. I'm not them bleh, bleh. Circular. Yeah. We'll just do this way. It was an e interesting idea, but I don't want it overlapping like that. Okay. Oh, we also need to. Nope. That's also pin pad one. Wait a minute. Is it one or is it two? Let's go back over here. It is positive. What pin number? Wire. But we don't know. Why? Library editor, library browser. I want the editor because I want to see how um, device browser properties load component from library battery 
Not because I want to make any changes, but because I want to see what pin number that claims to be. All right, so positive is 1. So the positive side is pin 1, and edit. Negative side is pin 2. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. And go back here. So let's see here. these batteries... Yeah, that clip is positive, and then the negative is the big pad on the bottom. Okay, so I do want that to be pin 1. And then dun, 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 I'm going to duplicate that pad, and I'm going to put it over here. I've got it moved wrong. There we go. And then duplicate that pad and put it up on the top side. Forward, even oh, okay. <laughs> Those are the pads for the clip. And then I need to place a large surface mount pad in the middle. Pad 2, this one is surface mount. It is, yeah, we'll go circular. So it is claiming, if I make that 0.7, that that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I guess so, because that's going to be the entire size of the battery. Okay. And then I also want to draw an outline around it. So let me Yeah. Okay. So we'll go here. That's going to put it on silk. Yes. So 0.83, half of that's going to be I'll okay, call it 0.84, so 0.42 that's 4, 1, so 4, 2 is going to go just one click out from there. Um, point 0.61, one, so point 0.3. Nope, point 0.36 is the outer edge, so, and then call that half of that. 0.36 is so, what is that, 1.8? 5, 6, 7, 8, boom, 4, 2. All right, so from here, 1.8. Why is my, the cat just walked across my workbench through the window between this room and the living room. Are you jerky? Greg, uh, would be nice to select them all and affect a change at one time. If you're talking about the pads, uh, yeah, that is a feature that Eagle has that KiCad is severely lacking, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that is that is something. Hang on for one second while I let my cat out of the office. Hang on. Go. Fine, go. You've stayed your hour. Movie reference, anyone? Fine, go, you've stayed your hour. Get it? Do you know what it's from? Come on, come on. That's right. So I married an axe murderer. I do a lot of movie references, you may notice. Okay, so 3.6, so is it going to be, what is that? Um, 1.8. So I want to go in, just up at a diagonal. Oh, tag damn it, 11. Um, so that's 0.18, and I'm going to go up to 2.9 out of 45. Oh, good enough. 
where is that on the point three point three and then down to four point two on the forty five that does not look right. Oh, maybe it is. Okay. And down on here. To right about there. Okay. So that's the back side of the battery clip. Um And then I kind of want to do I'm kind of making it up as I go here. Um, yeah, we'll just do that. That's fine. How's that? Does that look good? Good enough for me. All right, so I'm going to save that footprint into the library. That's a CR2032. Uh, before I do this, let me make sure. So pin one is the positive that goes on top, and pin two is the big ground pad in the middle. See, I'm kind of, kind of don't want that overhang. I'm thinking about just making this a big rectangular pad so that it's completely covered by this. Rectangular, 7.7.7. How about we make that a 0.5 and see what that looks like. See, that looks pretty good. Oh, but we're touching corners. Those corners, uh, no, okay, we cannot do that. Um... Edit. How about that? That I like. Okay. I think that's what we're going to stick with. Uh, all right. We'll save that. CR 2032. Okay. So I have created my CR2032 and my RFM69. So let's go back, do I already have it open? No, I do not. So let's go back to CVPCB and let's assign those. So load up my library. CR2032 and then RFM 69 HCW. All right. <clears throat> so we have um, we have assigned all of our parts, but we still don't have a board yet. So I save that. This is another thing that Eagle does much better than KiCad. Eagle has a very tight coupling between the PC board, uh, the, the I'm sorry, the schematic capture and the board layout program. You make a change to one and it immediately shows up in the other one. Uh, KiCad is a little bit weird. You have to go in, you make your changes here You uh, in the schematic, you save everything in the schematic, then you go over to CVPCB, you do all your assignments, you save them, and then you generate a netlist on uh, the schematic program. Just the default file name is fine, but you have to explicitly go generate that netlist, and then you can um, run... P excuse me, run PCB new to open up the board layout program. And then from here, it's not automatically linked. You have to tell it to read a netlist. Now it defaults to the right thing, but you still have to tell it to read. And all of my components are there now. You you hit read, uh, because it already did, and then you have to close it. So I mean, it's, it's really just kind of a cumbersome process to go from schematic to component selection, to board layout. And I don't understand why they had to make it that way. But, 
hey, look, it's a big pile of components. All their origins are in the same spot. So the first thing you end up doing is taking them all and spreading them out, which is kind of a pain in the arse. Like I said, Eagle and KiCad each have their relative advantages and disadvantages. There are some things that one does a lot better than the other. Oops. Nope. I don't want to just move the text. I actually want to move the component. No. Footprint. Uh, capacitors. So, yeah, this is the exciting part where you just kind of grab all the things and move them around. If you know roughly what components they're going to go next to, then you would do well to move them there. Oops, what is that? That's a diode. We'll move that over there. Diode. Nope, those are LEDs. Those are going to go on the edge of the board. That's also going to go on the edge of the board. That's a button. Oy. Oop, that's a crystal oscillator. Move that over there. So I'm obviously not, nope, let's go down there. I'm obviously not actually doing any proper layout right now. I am just trying to get things moved out so that I can reach them all. And then I will put them into general categories of where they're going to land on the board. Uh, that's reset. That one goes over there. <coughs> P2, I don't remember what that one is. We'll move that somewhere. That is the I squared C, so that's the display. I could tell that because it had two connections to the resistors. Uh, that's the boot. One of the boots. That's the other boot. Um, footprint P1. P1. Oh, that's the power. Um, diode. Anything on here? Yeah, there are. Um, everything else are diodes. Okay. Gah. One of the things that KiCad does a lot better than Eagle, in my opinion, is that it doesn't care if you place something off the edge of the board. Um, Eagle has board size limitations because it's a commercial product and they want to convince you to give them money. Um, so the board sizes are limited. And if you try to place a component out off the board just to move it out of the way temporarily, it's like, eh, nope, you can't put that there. Like, Thank you very much. Can I just put it there for temporary? No, no, fine. I'll go use KiCad. So, all right, you know what? I've been going for an hour, oh, geez, an hour and 14 minutes, hour and 15 minutes. I think I'm going to stop here for tonight. Um, to save that. So we have all of our components on the board. Um, these are the physical components that we selected using the PVPC or CVPCB. I don't know what it stands for, but basically mapping schematic to component on a board, uh, an actual physical part on a board what shape it's going to take and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then we dumped it onto a board, although we haven't actually defined an outline yet. We do that with that tool over there and by saying I want to draw on edge cuts. So, you know, and hey, look, we've got a board. Exciting, huh? 
So, you know, that's how you do a board. We're going to do a better outline for a board, and we're going to make this a lot smaller too because the bigger the board, the more expensive it is to have it fabbed. So, um, but we've got all of that stuff, and we've got a nice smattering of, you know, we've got a couple of crystals. We've got a crystal resonator. Um, we've got, you know, a bunch of capacitors. We've got ceramic disc capacitors. We've got some electrolytics. We've got a battery. We've got a surface mount thing here. We've got a USB connector. We've got some headers. We've got... Um, you know, an ST-Link programming header, some LEDs over there. We've got that. We've got a bunch of resistors, a little bit of surface mount over here, and some buttons. You know, we've got a nice smattering of things, and we're going to have to find a way to lay them out that makes sense. Um, you know, I want it to be... It's a badge that you're going to be wearing on a lanyard, right? Um, one of the mistakes that we made this year is that when I'm wearing this around my neck and I lift it up to use it, it's upside down. I have to, the keyboard is on the top and the display is on the bottom. So one of the things I'm gonna do on this version is that I'm going to mount it, I'm gonna mount the components so that when you are holding it up like this and the lanyard holes are on the bottom, then everything is gonna be right side up so that you can use it while it's still on the lanyard. Uh, so that's something I'm gonna do for next year. Oh, there's been a fair bit of chat activity. Would be nice to be able to select them all. In fact, I just tuned in, and the 30 seconds of watching, I love Eagle immensely more. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, yeah, okay, Chris. Um, you just tuned in to the, the, one of the things that I don't like about uh, KiCad, but there are a lot of things I don't like about Eagle. So if I had to add a component to the project down the road again, would you have to go through all of this drag and drop process over again, or do you only do it when you start up a new project? It's only when you start up a new project. Basically, anytime you add components to the board, all those components um, are, they land on top of each other uh, at the origin of the board. Um, and so if I later on add one or two, three, you know, maybe two or three more components, then those two, three components will land at, on the same spot, but you only have to drag them, you know, it's only two or three at that time. But if I add a whole bunch more components to it, then yeah, they will all land on the same spot, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, but, 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 but I would guess that changing the schematic and re-importing the netlist would only drop in new components and leave the rest in place. That is true. Uh, if I make a change, in fact, if I change a component, let's see here, how do I word this? If I change a component, let's, so like, for example, these LEDs, I'm going to be swapping out these LEDs and well, with a different component. I have to go onto the board and delete them from the board before importing the netlist will actually change their outline. Um, so I delete them, then I re-import the netlist, and it will select the the new outline for them. Uh, and they'll all be stacked up on top of each other at the origin. You need to go drag them over to the, to the right place. But everything else stays in place. It errs on the side of not messing with what you've got there. You have to explicitly delete the thing and then re-import the netlist for it to try and change what's there. This is very good for things like um, if for by accident you change the... Um, uh, the reference numbers, it the, the board program will not mess with your reference numbers. It won't mess with anything that's there. It's um, kind of good in that regard. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Though I'm now curious if it would be smart enough for if, for example, if you had R1 and R2 and then removed R2 and had two more resistors named R2 and R4, if the board R2 gets clobbered, replaced. So no, it won't. Um, if you change R2 from one thing to another thing, um, you have to explicitly delete R2 before re-importing the netlist will actually give you the new thing, uh, which, as far as I'm concerned, is a good thing. Um, although I will confess that Eagle's integration between uh, schematic and layout is much better. Yeah, 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 Chris. Chris is uh, saying that he likes Eagle's part of this. I, I admit, Eagle is much better at this part of it than, than uh, KiCad. Okay, really, I've been going for an hour and 20 minutes. I think I'm going to wrap up for tonight. Uh, next time we get together, I am going to actually start laying all of this stuff out in a, in a board organization that makes sense. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. I don't really read uh, face or uh, YouTube comments, so a lot of YouTubers say leave comments down below. Go ahead and leave comments down below, but I'm not probably not going to see it. Uh, you'll have much better luck hitting me up as at Smitty Halibut on Twitter, S-M-I-T-T-Y-H-A-L-I-B-U-T. Uh, oh, hey, I've got, what is it? That. Let's do that. Uh, I should probably put my uh, Twitter handle on that, though. So I got my lower third now. Yay. I'm getting, having fun with this. Um, 
hit me up on Twitter, Smitty Halibut, and uh, you know, go ahead and subscribe if you want. Uh, that way you don't miss an episode. I will be posting these into playlists. Um, I've got individual playlists for each of the different projects that I'm working on. Uh, so there is a playlist for the Darknet Badge 2017. Uh, go ahead and, um, I don't know if you can subscribe to playlists or, or how that works, but uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me in the chat room uh, and uh, asking questions and everything. And that's, uh, that would be great. I would love to have you join me. Uh, again, check Twitter. That's usually where I announce these things when I'm starting up live. So um, until next time, thank you very much for joining me. This has been Smitty working on something. <laughs>